It's the fifth segment of the wine challenge. I'm in New York, Scarsdale at Zaki's with Andrew McMurray. So Andrew, I mean, this is sort of a, sort of a hodgepodge. It's a, one of everything. I'm, what's the theme here? This is, I tasked my buying team to come up with what we call our oddball lot. So I can tell you, for me, every one of these wines, I tasted myself for the first time last week. They are about as obscure as you're going to get, but it shows off you know, unique regions, unique grapes from around the wine world that you're not going to see on a daily basis, so we thought it'd be cool. Oh, that's cool. Just because. You didn't want it to be boring mainstream stuff when you came here, did you? No, not at all. So, and, and so what's the sort of price points on it? They swing anywhere between, I think, 30 and $75 a bottle. So okay. they're not inexpensive, but usually when you get these unique oddball sort of things, we like to keep them in the store because they're unique, they're special, they're usually going to be really high quality for what they are. Um, and they're just for people who want to explore and learn about, you know, different things within the wine world. So awesome! Let's check it out then. Okie dokie. Wine number one. So the first wine Creamy. comes from Happily. a very, you know, well-known wine producing region, but maybe just not so well known for white wine. That's about. Hmm. I like the acidity and that interplay between slightly tropical, but then sort of a chalky character to it. Mm -hmm. And also, maybe some white peaches, good fruit, lots going on. Nice texture. And now it's yeah. like lemon curd. Right, I was going to say, it's, it's got a lot of density to it. I mean, super rich, like in that, the front third of the mouth, it really hangs there. Mm. Wow. And then you're almost getting a salty character. Beautiful texture. Let's see. 14, 20. I'm 90 on that, no problem. I'm really liking that. And the more you taste it, the more it grows on you. Right. Like you said, that the, the saltiness on yes. the finish, it, it, um, that definitely screams out for food for me. Delicious wine with dense texture. Fruit. Long finish. Okay, we're going with a Priorat Blanco. So Priorat, Whoa. obviously, best known for the reds, and not a lot of white comes out of there. Um, and that is... What's the variety? Oh, got a nacha. Yep. Bianco and Macabeo. Right, Macabeo, exactly. Not in the expensive dollars a bottle, but considering the region, and I would imagine, you know, it's like getting rosé champagne. It's, you know, this, this, such a small percentage of it is, is made to white. That's really cool. Yep. A bit expensive, I mean... But it is just sort of a funky, mm -hmm. cool wine that you never, you know, come across. Like I said, on this flight, we're not necessarily going towards value-driven because if they only make, you know, such a small percentage of it, you know, I can't imagine from a region like that where it must be so expensive to produce the wine itself that it's going to be super cheap. But we like to have fun things like this in the store. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Another one. This producer's been a staff favorite for a while. Again, not mainstream. I'm trying to. Maybe more pineapple and dried pineapples and a little bit of honey, flowers. This wine's a little bit more sort of oily to it. It's a little bit more fruity. Feels a little more linear. Yeah, and it, yeah. And it was a little bit less even dry than the first one. But that could be because of the variety. Yep. Yeah, you gotta you gotta kind of take the, yeah. the context of the first one out to go to the go to go to the second. I think this is more of a crowd pleaser. I could see, and you know, anyone that likes a um, pretty fruit-driven wine that doesn't have wood, that's just looking for fruit. If you really like, you know, simple things like Pinot Grigio or even top Pinot Grigios, it's you know, it's a delicious wine like that and fruity. Not the most complex wine, but really, really good. I, I like it a little bit better than the first one. I'm 91 points yeah. on that. Yeah, I like the the. the 
you know, the, the purity and the, the, you know, the cleanliness on the, on the finish. This is Abitucci, the, uh, the, the uh, General La Revolution. What's the, what's the Cephage then? What's the... It's a, it's a total, I even got to look this one up. This one's a total field blend. Um, Whoa. You know, of a little bit of everything. And if, if you can pronounce half of those grapes, you get a gold star for the day. Oh my um, God, this is, I mean, the only thing I can see is Vermentino. Right. One, uh, but, you know, very, you know the, the, the indigenous rattles and that's going to be something similar, obviously. This is Trabiano crazy wine. I've never had this. The, and it's from Corsica. Kermit Lynch, always brings in really cool wines. Right. And to have a white from Corsica, this is something that's, you know, oh, a gosh. very solid after producer in a lot of the great on-premise restaurants in New York. And as you can see from the price point, not inexpensive. Wow, $95, $95 bucks. a bottle. Yeah. This is a little... I'll keep reemphasizing. We're not going value driven on this flight. Okay, this wine. I mean, we're going to start out looking at looking at the color on that. And it also, it's a, a bit cloudy too. Yep. This maybe this will be be the natural wine then. Do you sell much anyway? natural wine? Not as much as you might think. It's this you know it smells like natural wine. Yep. Or it could, or it could be something like Cheresola from um, a lighter one from Sicily, but. Okay, like the candied fruit to that nose is just like, you have a hard time comparing it to anything. It's just so unique. I really like this wine because it's not rosé. It's what it is really is a delicate red. Mm -hmm. Balanced, long, beautiful with peaches, strawberries, and I am no, well, like I said, maybe it's something like what I said from Sicily, but I really like the finish too. It's very complex and yep. subtle. And I can just see that with, with food, with a, with a nice, um, you know, subtle pasta, uh, it would be just fabulous. Like you said, this the, de the, de cool like the delicacy and the texture to this is like super cool. Mm. I'm 93 on that. I don't know. I just love that. Isn't it, isn't it great? This is uh, Trousseau from Arno Roberts. Are you familiar Whoa, with these guys? She... These guys are making some great wines in, or on the Sonoma side. Whoa. And, you know, this wine, they don't make a lot of it. I mean, I think at most they might make a barrel of it. What a cool wine. Isn't that great? And the, and the label Trousseau. kind of... Where's Trousseau normally grown then? Do you know? This is crazy. And it's thirty three ninety nine. Yep. So it's not crazy price or not as high as the other two. Yes. Yeah, so if you like really balanced, beautiful wines, it's so it reminds me of a more traditional styled um, uh, Burgundy or something. Right. And then, but and then this nice sort of peach character. That's you could, really you cool. You could definitely fool a lot of your friends with this wine. Wow. Or stump them, who think they know a lot about wine. That is awesome. That was a really cool wine. Really cool. Okay, and this is, is the complete opposite. Yeah, color. I know. When you go <laughs> to that. Wow. This has such a sort of grapey character. Yep. Yeah, maybe a little bit of tar. Even some um, graphite. Speak, yeah, and that spe it, I think that speaks to the varietal in this for sure. And, well, I won't go any further. It's very clean, focused. Again, you're getting that asphalt character on the finish. But for as dark as that wine is, it doesn't weigh as heavy as you might think on the palate, or no. even as it comes across in the nose. But it reminds me of something like, like Mauvaitre or something, one of the um, lesser varieties they use in Chateauneuf. We, and you're not getting that much tannin either on right. it. Right. So it's really the fruit, but then it's held in reserve. Good acidity, balance. It's got cool lift to the finish for sure. Yeah, and it's super clean. That's the only reason why I was, well, it, it, it almost seems another sort of world, uh, new world sort of wine. It's very well made. I'm uh, on this. I'm 90 on this. It's funny, I like the 
<coughs> the trousseau a little bit more because it's more complex. This is slightly uh, monolithic or one-dimensional, but I doubt. love the fruit and, and, and balance to it and freshness. Right, but that's, you know, that probably partly speaks a little bit to your palate. I mean, that's yeah. more towards your style and my style, and this, the darker style, is, people are certainly going to like that. Um, this is, it's called, the wine's called La, La Casilla, Casilla, and it's... it's From España? It's uh, Bobal. It's uh, done in uh, carbonic maceration. Ah, uh, that's why. So that, you know, that's So you're the, getting almost a Beaujolais sort of right. uh, intensity to it. Right. 1999 La yeah. Casilla. So we kind of went from the high end spectrum ocean. and worked our way down in price, but Manchuela, cool, right? Really good. And the variety? It's Bobal. Bobal. Wow. That's fun. I mean, yeah. Awesome. Well, great tasting. That was crazy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we'll call it, like you said, the crazy flight <laughs> instead of the oddball flight. So we took you down a weird path, but it was a fun path. It was. Thanks. Thanks.